Once upon a time, there was a teeny tiny teeny tiny girl called Little Almond. She slept in a teeny tiny teeny tiny bed in a thick forest. Thick ebony trees grew tall, curling their branches high above her head. Red apples hung on branches amongst the rich green leaves. The forest floor was home to many cats. They wandered familiarly around Little Almond, bringing her stories and smells from faraway lands. The sunlight that managed to drip down through the dense leaves was thick and honey-colored. She collected it in jars and filled her shelves with these jars. The wind blew, carrying secrets with it, and Little Almond was content. Her habit was not to wander. She had everything she needed, and what she did not have, she made by tying pieces of tall grass together. One night, Little Almond found herself beyond the edges of her map. She was between two rows of tall oak trees. Her bag was filled with apples and one black cat was at her feet. She turned around. The trees seemed to go on in both directions as far as she could see. The trees of each row were very close together and she peered through at what was beyond. The forest was thick and very dark. Between the two rows, soft grass grew on the ground. Little Almond did not know which way would take her home, or if that was even the direction she should go. So she put one little foot in front of the other, because that was all she knew how to do. The cat followed. Little Almond walked for a long time. The grass was soft under her feet. The air smelled sweeter and less musky than it did where she lived. Although the sun was not as thick here, it was more plentiful. She drew it in with her breath and warmed her inside. She kept walking. The sun slowly began to fade from view, its long fingers stretching before finally letting go. Little Almond curled to sleep. For as long as she could remember, she had slept every night in her teeny tiny teeny tiny bed. The black cat came around and curled behind her knees. Little Almond was awakened by the sun, stretched around the other side to find her once again. She picked up her bag and continued to walk. The grass was still soft. Still, she did not know where she was. She did not know if she was going in the right direction or even if she, met, or even if she was meant to be going back home. The trees grew in two straight rows on either side of her, though they were not as dense as they had been. Roses grew. As she continued, they grew thick and wild. They grew high around her and intoxicated her with their scent, their tangle of thorns. Red petals brushed against her cheeks and covered the ground. Finally, the sky turned red, then black, and little Almond lay down to sleep, the cat behind her knees. On the third day, she passed amongst pear trees. The scent of roses was tangled in her hair as she delicately carried herself amongst the pears. Her head felt light with sweetness. Her bag of apples had begun to dwindle, so she reached up to fill her bag. The golden fruit reminded her of the jars of sunlight she had collected. She sighed, wondering if she would ever see them again. Although she felt nostalgic, it was comfortable to be able to have a familiar color to hold on to. The next morning, the branches of the trees were covered, thick with cocoons, sticky and translucent. A little almond stepped lightly. By evening, she was surrounded by wings of every color. The next day, it snowed. Huge flakes of white danced themselves to the ground. They accumulated on little almond's little head and shoulders. By afternoon, she had to lift her knees high with each step in order to get through the deep, deep snow. The day after that, the earth was wet and muddy. Her teeny tiny feet became thick with mud and looked like those of a monster. At times, she had to pick up the cat and carry it where deep puddles had collected. During the coldness of the night, she wondered if she would ever find her home again. Perhaps she should walk back to the roses and make her home there. But the oak trees continued to grow in two straight lines, and somehow she knew that she had to find an end. The following day was not so wet, though her feet were still heavy with mud despite the cat's best efforts. 
As she walked, she heard a faint rustling sound. She had not met any animals aside from the cat the whole time she had been walking. The noises were faint and she became quite, quite curious. Finally, she saw a woman sitting in the grass. She had wild hair, layers of clothes spread around her and dug into the earth with her hands. And the woman did not look up as Little Almond approached her. Her arms were covered in mud up to her elbows and she had mud in the corner of her mouth and on her chin. Excuse me, miss, I've lost my map. And I wonder if you could tell me what lies beyond this row of trees. Little Almond's voice was as timid as her eyes were wide. The woman did not look up. She wiggled her black fingers further into the earth. Little Almond knelt down, bringing her face nearer to the woman's and tried again. I'm trying to find my way home. Can you tell me how much farther these trees go on? The woman brought her face up as if to look at Little Almond, but seemed not to see her. Her face remained blank, as if she were not there at all. Her mouth was slowly moving as if she were chewing, and Little Almond heard the gritty sound of racks between her teeth. Her stare became more concentrated. Still, her fingers continued to move. The cat meowed. Little Almond rose to her feet and followed the cat. That night, Little Almond deflated to the ground. She'd been through roses, pears, and mud, and everything was unfamiliar. She wondered when she would find her home or be able to build herself a new home. Her sorrows were covered by the darkness of the night, but they did not disappear. She continued to walk. She swam through an ocean, walked through willow trees, climbed tall mountains, she lost track of time. She no longer recognized the scents in the wind. She was sure she was going mad. She could hear a circus on the other side of the trees. She could make out the sounds of performers and clowns. They were laughing and shouting and calling attention to themselves. She could not understand their language, nor could she make her way past the trees to get to them. She continued to walk, which was the only thing she knew to do. She heard an elephant and felt a bit frightened. Monkeys called and she could see flames leaping behind the trees. Then she heard breaking glass and shouting and she was glad that the trees were there to separate her. The next day she came to a desert. The sand was sparse and rocky and cactuses grew in thick, strange configurations. Little Almond marveled at the abundance of the cactuses and the way they grew in geometric formations. As the sun went down, Little Almond curled to sleep, the same as always since she had begun her strange journey. A cactus curled, forming an alcove around her. She slept with the cat behind her knees, careful not to roll too much lest she be pricked. That night she dreamed. Her dream was vivid, the color supersaturated. She dreamed the sand that she was lying on was soft, softer than she thought possible. The sun was warm and the sky blue. The sound of the woman in the dirt was so loud that Little Almond could almost feel the mud slipping and scratching down her throat. Their wings were soft as she brushed aside a veil of butterflies to find her path. The ebony forest was musty and she felt swallowed by its darkness. The sun rose over Little Almond, but still she kept dreaming. She felt hot and uncomfortable. She rolled and was pricked by the cactus, but still she kept dreaming. And the colors of the pears were overwhelming. Deliriously, she reached up and pulled the color into her bag. From the meadow, she picked tall grasses. As she turned, she felt something warm and soft beneath her and she heard the cat yelp. She held it tight in her arms against its struggles. She needed it. She went even further. She picked heavy apples, their skin smooth against her palms. Leaves and pretty stones went into her bag as well. Berries, flowers, seeds, and bird feathers. Pieces of bark and different colors of mud. She gathered the wind in an acorn shell and wrapped the song of a bird in a catalpa leaf. She heard herself yelp as she was pricked by a cactus, but she let the noise drop. She grabbed the hum from a flock of cicadas and the twinkle of a family of fireflies. Exhausted, she let the weight of her gatherings crush against her. She slept without moving. 
It was not until she felt the sun for the third time across her face that she woke up. The sun was thick and familiar. The air was deep and she lay breathing for quite some time. She could feel the cool grass beneath her. The ground was firm with a certain dampness on the tip of each blade of grass. A little almond was comfortable. She could hear the cats moving and meowing around her. She felt a paw on her shoulder and she let the cat crawl out of the bag. Slowly, little almond opened her eyes. <laughs>